in two months' time, and we might say, well, that was the trough of the 40-week cycle. Okay, it is still not impossible, uh, which is um, uh, which is why recently, over the past several weeks on trades, I've been emphasizing the importance of monitoring alternate analyses. So you can see here um, in uh, this particular um, uh, workspace that I am using to monitor the Australian market, I have. Um, I have uh, uh, two analyses that I'm monitoring. These are the two analyses that I think are most likely. Um, and this analysis uh, uh, puts the 40-week cycle trough right there uh, on the 4th of June. Uh, and so this is still a possible analysis. Now, I get a lot of emails from people, and um, I do my best to respond to them. Recently, I have been flooded by a few emails, and I'm a little, a little behind in responding. But I, I, I get a lot of emails from people saying, um, I want to trade this market, and um, has that 40-week cycle trough occurred or hasn't it? And um, my, re my response to all of them is along the same lines, um, and, 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 and it goes like this. Um, the trading decisions that you make um, should not be focused on whether that trough has occurred or not. Okay, it's it's a it's a very subtle thing, and I, and I've just provided I hope some sort of demonstration of that. Um, but I believe that traders often get too hung up on the analysis. I think it's very important to make sure that you have a good analysis. There's no question about that. Absolutely vital that you make sure you have a good analysis. But you need to keep in mind the fact that that one of two things, one of two possible, one of two possibilities might be playing out. I believe in the Australian markets. Uh, at the moment, there are only two possibilities. Um, there, there are other less likely, very um, um, unusual possibilities, which is why I have four charts. But, uh, um, but as a as a trader trading in this market, I would only consider two possible things that might be occurring. And here is the one thing that might be occurring, which of course has the um, has the 40-week uh, cycle um, over here on the on the 4th of June. And um, and then the um, other alternate, um, which is now my preferred um, analysis, is is is, is um, placing the 80-day cycle trough on the 4th of June. How do you work? How do you make trading decisions on the basis that two possibilities uh, uh, might be occurring? And it's 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 very very important because um, you must still make trading decisions. You must not suffer from um, analysis paralysis, okay? You mustn't become paralyzed by your analysis. If the uh, two possible alternatives that, uh, that are playing out, or there might be more, um, are, are totally contradictory, then, of course, you must step aside and not trade the market because the cycles aren't clear. However, in um, this particular market, even though coming into the 4th of June um, trough, there, uh, there, there were two uh, possible and likely alternatives, um, uh, um, you can nevertheless make trading decisions. Um, uh, the, uh, what you need to do is you need to realize that a trading decision is really just simply positioning yourself in such a way so that if your analysis proves to be correct, you can profit from it. And that's why I believe um, traders should not become too caught up in their analysis. I've been receiving a lot of emails uh, recently saying, has the 40-week cycle trough occurred or not? And as a trader and as, as an analyst, that's a really important and fascinating question, and I love debating it, as you know. I go on about it a lot. Um, uh, um, so as an analyst, that's a really important question. But as a trader, it is a less important question because... Um, whether or not the the 40 week cycle trough has actually occurred is not important. What is important is that you have made trading decisions so that you can profit um, uh, um, if that trough has occurred, and so that you are protected if it hasn't. It's as simple as that. Uh, you should not be agonising over your analyses. You should not be saying, you should not be scratching your head and looking for some other clue to provide you with the final answer. Because often that other clue doesn't present itself. Okay, I've I've shown a few things that you can use here, and um, 
And one of the most important of those clues has to do with the unfolding uh, um, cycle shape. There is the M shape of a cycle, and when somebody shows me an M shape that looks like that, I know that that is a slightly bullish, but not very bullish M shape, and it is unlikely to be the first 20-day cycle that follows the formation of a 40-week cycle in the market. Now, um, I've, I've drawn that there on purpose because I now want to show you the same thing that's happening in the American markets. So let's uh, switch to um, the American markets and um, let's, uh, let's zoom in on the same sort of um, time frame. Okay, and let me draw the M shape over this analysis. Um, most of my analyses in the American markets are, in fact, positioning, uh, as you can see, the 40-week uh, cycle on the 4th of June. And let's take a look at, this, at the shape of the 20-day cycle in the American markets. Okay, here it is there. Okay, now, uh, I hope you can see, at a glance, the difference between those two M shapes. I can't switch between them, but let me, let me, let me try and um, uh, sort of replicate them here on the chart. Here is the M shape in the Australian market, slightly higher peak, lower trough. That is, in fact, it's a much lower trough. It's slightly above that, uh, that trough over there. That's the M shape of the recent 20-day cycle in the Australian market. What can you say about that shape? You can say that it's a slightly bullish, probably neutral underlying trend. Here is the same 20-day cycle in the American market, a much steeper upwards leg, first of all, a quicker and faster um, downward pull, a greater pull-up, and then a drop down to a trough which has not fallen below the center trough of that, of that M shape. Okay? There's a direct comparison of what's happening between these two markets. Okay, now um, this is how I use cycle shapes. I use cycle shapes all the time. Um, uh, um, some people might say I have a, a cycle shape um, obsessive compulsive disorder because I see cycle shapes everywhere and it's how I monitor what's happening in the market. Now, if you had entered as a trader um, as the market approached uh, the, the first week of June, um, as we all know from ST Outlook and from, and from um, Trader Chat, of course, we all know that we were expecting the 40-week cycle to be occurring sometime soon. Okay, and um, if as a trader you decided to make trading decisions on the basis of, um, of uh, entering, say, on the 40-day cycle, then as, the, um, as the, the cyclic picture unfolded, as price bounced out of that 4th of June trough, you would have been monitoring very carefully what was happening. If you were trading the U.S. markets, you would have drawn a different conclusion to what uh, the, to the conclusion you would have drawn trading the Australian markets. Why? Because of the cycle shapes. The cycle shape in the American markets, despite the recent uh, volatility and the recent fall, the cycle shape is nevertheless a much more bullish shape. Okay? Simple as that. That is a bullish cycle shape. Okay? I'm thinking of um, uh, uh, doing some sort of flashcard quizzes. I'm going to I'm going to pop up cycle shapes, and I'm going to say, is that bullish? Is that bearish? Because it, it's actually really quite easy once you once you get used to it. But this is is a, a very bullish shape. Okay, uh, that's a bull pattern, and this pattern that's happened in um, in the in the Australian markets is slightly bullish, but it is more what I would describe as a neutral. And I'm not going to write. The whole of neutral. Well, I will try. I'm going to call it newt. Okay, so that's a neutral cycle shape, and in the American markets, it's a bullish, uh, it's a bullish cycle shape. So, uh, what sort of conclusion can we draw about this? I suspect that the 40-week cycle has not formed yet in the Australian markets because we have seen a neutrally shaped 20-day cycle unfold. I suspect there is a, a, a greater uh, likelihood that the 40-week cycle has occurred in the American markets. Okay, that's my first sort of summary, first sort of conclusion. My second conclusion that I would draw is um, that if I was trading both of these markets, I might possibly have entered trades into both of the markets. Okay, my Australian trade, I, I would have monitored very closely. I would have monitored both of them closely. My Australian trade, I would have started getting cold feet round about the formation of this trough over here.
because I would have said, this is not looking like a very bullish cycle. I would have started getting cold feet. What do you do when you get cold feet and you're in a trade? You set tight stops. Okay, so I, I would have hopefully exited uh, the Australian trade um, at a, a break-even or slightly profitable position. I, I certainly would have, wouldn't have hung in there. If a cycle shape begins to look um, neutral or bearish, and it should be bullish, you need to get out of that trade. You must respond when you see things happening. In the, um, in the, um, uh, in the uh, American markets, um, despite the very sharp fall that has happened recently, um, uh, this week, uh, you know, there was a tremendous fall. Was it Tuesday, I think? The markets came, came falling down um, really hard. Those markets came down um, uh, really hard. Nevertheless, they came down from a higher point. Okay, uh, well, I can draw it here. Here it is. Uh, they came down from a higher point. So they came down really hard. The important thing is you don't panic. Um, you need to make your decisions beforehand. And, um, and I, uh, the day before, looked at the markets and I said, this is still looking like a, a bullish shaped, uh, um, 20-day cycle to me. Okay. The important thing is you don't, you don't change your mind when, uh, when the market panics and drops sharply. Even though the market st uh, uh, dropped down pretty hard, we were expecting the market to drop, of course, into a 20-day cycle trough. We were expecting it to fall. It just simply fell a little faster than, um, than, mm. than, 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 than people expected. Um, and so it has nevertheless left behind it uh, a bullishly shaped cycle. Uh, so I think it is still... Uh, possible, and it is even becoming likely that the eight, that the 40-week cycle has occurred in the U.S. markets. I might still be proved wrong, but it, uh, it is still looking uh, um, likely to me. Of course, if the markets fall hard and and come really quickly down down here uh, um, very soon, then um, then of course I will have been wrong as an analyst. Okay, and um, being wrong as an analyst is not the end of the world. Um, being wrong as a trader is a problem. Uh, so you must, of course, protect your profits. Um, certainly, if if I was um, in a in a 40-day trade on uh, this particular market, I would tighten my stops right below that 20-day uh, cycle because it's not impossible that this 20-day cycle is still going to turn into the worst cycle shape of them all, which looks bullish and then turns horribly bearish. That is the kind of cycle shape that you must uh, make sure that you avoid. And, of course, the way that you avoid it is you set your stops um, before, uh, before the cycle shape turns into that kind of uh, shape. Okay, so um, uh, um, that's a um, discussion of what I believe is, is happening in the markets at the moment. Uh, just another five minutes left on today's uh, Trader Chat, during which time I would like to answer um, uh, very quickly. Um